Hello and welcome to Rotary Rocketry. In our previous video, we built a nice little ripstop nylon parachute. But to attach a parachute to a rocket, you still need a shock cord. Today, I'm going to show you the importance of having the proper length shock cord, and I'll give you a simple way to calculate the proper length of the shock cord for your rocket. Now there's a common rule used in amateur rocketry that some of you might be thinking of right now. The rule is the length of the shock cord should be between three times and five times the length of the rocket. Now I'm not saying that rule doesn't work, but what I don't like about that rule is that it's not very accurate. I'll show you an example. Here I've got a rocket that's four feet long. Using that rule, the shock cord for this should be somewhere between 12 feet and 20 feet long, which is a pretty big range. And if I only need a 12 foot shock cord, why would I want to add the extra eight feet and have a 20 foot shock cord? That would just be more cord in the rocket that could get tangled up and adds unnecessary weight to the rocket as well. And actually the minimum shock cord length for this rocket and its parachute is only nine and a half feet. Let me show you why the length of the shock cord is so important and more specifically, what happens if the shock cord is too short. I've made the length of this shock cord the minimum length required for this rocket and this parachute. So the nose cone ejects and it starts pulling out all the cords and eventually the parachute. And just when I get to the point where there's no more shock cord left to pull out, that's exactly the point where the parachute is now completely out of the rocket and the parachute can deploy. Now if the shock cord is longer, it really doesn't make any difference because the parachute's already deployed. So if this was one foot or 10 foot longer, it doesn't make any difference. That's just extra cord because the parachute's already out. Now let's take a look at what happens if we just make the shock cord a little bit shorter. So I'm just gonna tie a loop in the shock cord a little further down just to make it about 16 inches shorter than the minimum required length. Now as the nose cone pulls all the lines out, when we get to the end of the shock cord, that's as far as I can pull. And the parachute hasn't completely removed itself from the rocket, which means that parachute's not gonna deploy and the rocket's just gonna tumble to the ground. The shock cord length we're gonna calculate is for this particular style of rocket. This is a single deploy rocket, which means that when the nose cone ejects, it pulls out the main parachute. And the shock cord is mounted in the rocket at the bottom of the parachute chamber. In this particular one, there's a bulkhead secured in place at the bottom of the chamber, and the cord is tied onto that bulkhead. There's two common ways to attach the nose cone and the shroud lines to the shock cord. And depending on which technique you choose, it changes the calculation of the shock cord a little bit. For this first example, we've attached the nose cone and the shroud lines to the end of the shock cord. So to calculate the minimum shock cord length, the first thing we need to know is the length of the shroud lines. So if I measure the shroud lines, we see that they are 50 inches long. The next thing we need is the depth of the chamber where the parachute sits in the rocket. So measuring down from the top of the tube until it hits that bulkhead inside the rocket, it is 20 inches deep. So we'll take the 50 inches, add 20 inches, and then we'll add 20 inches again. So the minimum length of the shock cord for this rocket and this parachute is 90 inches. Now there's another common way to attach the nose cone and the shroud lines to the shock cord. In this design, we have two mounting points on the shock cord, one at the end and this one's 16 inches down. In this design, you typically attach the parachute to the end and the nose cone gets attached to the one further down. This keeps the nose cone from getting tangled up in the shroud lines when the parachute deploys. So you still use the same calculation as before. The length of the shroud lines, add to it the depth of the chamber for the parachute, add that twice. But then you also need to add in the length of the cord between these two mounting points. So for this one, that's 50 plus 20 plus 20 plus 16. So for this design, the minimum length of the shock cord is 106 inches. I typically add an extra foot to my shock cord. It's not completely necessary, but I like to have a little bit of slack to know that everything's gonna get fully pulled out of the rocket and deployed properly. Also remember that this calculation is the minimum finished length. You can always go longer. And when you're building your rocket, don't cut the cord to this length, cut it longer. 
the attachment points inside the rocket and any attachment points that you make at the end of the cord are going to take up some of the cord length, so you'll need a little extra for that. Remember, you can always cut the cord shorter later if you need to. So that's all we've got for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something about shock cords. If you're not subscribed to the channel, we'd love it if you consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you like what we're doing, you can hit that like button as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.